Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, Daniel. Happy that you're here today. You have seen the title already. Today I would like to talk about QA prompts or AI prompts that will help your bug reporting. So we have seen a lot of white coding on social media, on YouTube, on various channels. Developers using AI co-pilots in their IDEs to vibe code cool new features in order to be faster, more efficient and stuff like that. At the same time, we are software testers. We also should leverage AI and use AI to speed up our testing activities. But it's not, I don't want to talk about vibe testing today or how we can use co-pilots for writing your test scripts and stuff. No, I would like to give you an idea what type of prompts that you can use in an AI LLM, for example, that will help you to work more and have more efficient in bug reporting. But in the end, if there is a vibe coded piece of product that you have tested either with AI or without an AI, a really good bug reporting is necessary, still necessary in order to deliver high quality product. So let's jump right into the slides for today. Hey, sorry for the little break of the main video. Since I'm talking about AI and how AI can speed up software development and software testing, I bet you all had the situation that you built something with AI, you used some prompts, you generated some code, you run it, it looks good in the beginning, you said like, wow, that looks super cool. But then it turns out that the prompt wasn't ideal that the generated code wasn't expecting or wasn't doing what you were expecting and the like. You run it and then you say, ooh, that doesn't work really well. And because of that, I'm really happy to present you today's video sponsor who can help you improve your testing with MCP and other AI features. And today's video sponsor is TestSprite. To avoid such scenarios that I just explained, you should have really a look at the TestSprite MCP. It was just launched and it's already going nuts on Product Hunt. You can drop TestSprite in your repo without writing a single test. It will read what the app or the AI previously generated and starts to automate every flow. The Test Sprite MCP is able to do the following. It can pass your product specification. It will check what your coding AI actually has done. It will build a test plan. It runs the front end and back end tests and it finds what's missing. And the best part, to be honest, it tells your AI how to fix the things that Test Sprite MCP and the agent has found. So you have to try it yourself. It's amazing to see how easy it is to integrate Test Sprite to your project and to see the agent in action. Last but not least, Test Sprite generates the test reports for you and also organize them in a test list and provide it with the latest monitoring to stay up to date on the testing agent activities. So AI writes the code, Test Sprite makes it real. Check the video links down below and try Test Sprite today yourself. And now back to the main video. So context is king. In case you are following, you have followed my videos before uh, when I was talking about prompt engineering and AI in software testing and talking about LLMs in general, you have seen that I was always talking or many times talking about the context. So the context is king and especially AIs, they need context to generate good results. Yeah, Depending on the context that you provide the LLM, the better the output, for example. And we will see that in a few seconds on system or on prompts that I'm going to provide with you. Keep in mind, 
garbage in, garbage out. If you don't provide the right context into the LLM, you will not get a good result. So always give the LLM a context like the following. You are a software testing expert in the field of exploratory testing. You know how to use heuristics such as FCC, cuts, widths and others. At the same time, you're an expert in bug advocacy and you know how to write good bug reports. That's a good context. So you give, um, you give the LLM the, the, the context that it's a software testing expert in the field of exploratory testing that it knows heuristics such as FCC cuts with and others and at the same time um, it's an expert on bug advocacy and know how to write good bug reports that's a good context but what does it what does it mean for us in software testing when we would like to write bug reports so let's see what we can do with the following so I will now give you some prompt ideas that will help you in certain categories, not only identify bugs, but also write them. So here is one that AI will boost your analysis analyzing bugs. So I bet you know that AI can boost your work as a software tester. I have talked about that many times now. On the following slides, I'm going to share 10 powerful prompts that will boost your bug analysis work, as I just said before. So keep the context in mind, and I'm sharing a short form of each prompt. So that's important. It's not the prompt that I'm going to show you that you can, you know, of course you can copy paste into your uh, favorite LLM and see what's going to happen, but always keep the context on your product in mind, give that context before, and then try the prompts in situations that you can use them. So here's one, bug report drafting. This is a prompt that you could enter. Given the following error logs, user actions and screenshots, Generate a detailed bug reporting, including steps to reproduce expected versus actual behavior, severity, and possible root cause. So this could be a bug report draft, right? So you give the LLM the error logs, you give the user actions and screenshots, and maybe also like the, the steps that it needs to reproduce the bug, and then it can generate the bug report for you. The second one, a bug triage prompt. So analyze these reported bugs and group them by severity, feature area and possible duplicates. Prioritize them for the next sprint. This is especially a really valuable prompt in case you get lots of bug reports, for example, from a crowd testing provider. So imagine you have a crowd testing approach, you have hundreds of crowd testers delivering your bug reports and the bug report is Excel based, for example. So you need to have some sort of mechanism in place, in this case, in a triage prompt that can group, uh, remove duplicates and stuff like that for you in, e in, a, in a few seconds. Uh, the reproducibility analysis. So given this bug report, you give the bug report, determine if the issue is reproducible, suggest any missing steps or additional data needed to reliably replicate the issue. So of course you need to describe more about the issue, maybe the data that you entered and stuff like that. And then it will help you to suggest any missing steps that could go wrong. Number four, root cause estimation. Analyze this crash log and stack trace to hy hypothesize the most likely root cause. It's not an easy word for me include any related code segments that may be relevant. Well, in this case, of course, you have to have some sort of access to the code base. In best case, you have an IDE where you can use a copilot, for example, to use that prompt to analyze not only the crashes, stack traces and others to get some more insights on where the issue might be. Bug summarization. Summarize the following long bug report into a concise version suitable for a bug ticket title and short description. Again, if you get a long bug report, you don't want to read all the text, just ask the LLM to summarize it and to create a bug report ticket for you. In best case, you provide the LLM with a template of the bug report and voila, you have a bug report. Number six, bug trend analysis. From this list that you give to the LLM, 
of historical bug reports identify trends in frequently affected modules, recurring issues, regressions over the last three releases. That's cool. So for example, imagine you have like uh, a test monitoring dashboard KPI systems in your company and you give the LLM all the data that you have basically. And you say, okay, historically, check all the bug reports that we have, that we got from past releases and production issues. And also you can give the LLM on top of that, the, the changes, the code changes affected in your product. And then ask the LLM to give a trend analysis on future releases. See what's going to happen. Number seven, generate test cases for reported bugs. Well, the obvious ones, given this bug description, generate positive negative test cases to verify the issue is fixed and does not regress. There are plugins or toolings out there already that you can basically plug in into your ticketing system. I have also done a couple of videos on that. Just check the videos on, on my YouTube channel where I was highlighting um, plugins that could be, as I said, an, entered to a ticketing system and based on a bug description, you can click a button and you get test cases and stuff like that out of the box. In case you don't have such a plugin, you can use that prompt in order to, to do the same thing. Uh, number eight, UI bug detection via image comparison. So you can give also the LLM two images of your product. And then you can say, compare these two UI screenshots, baseline versus new release, identify and describe any visual regressions or layout issues. Pretty cool, just give it a try. Number nine, language correction for bug reports. Improve the grammar, clarity and professionalism of this bug report for better understanding by developers. So you can also give the tone of voice to the LLM. You can also give examples, text snippet, text examples on how a bug report should be written in case you are working with different stakeholders or with different developers from different backgrounds. Perfect. Even if you work uh, in, a, in a distributed environment and you have uh, developers in other countries and are not well familiar in, let's say, reading English language, so you can translate it maybe into French, Spanish or whatever. See to understand and give more context to the developers. And last but not least, the last system prompt for today's video is the bug severity classifier. So evaluate the severity of this bug based on user impact, frequency, affected features, and platform. Classify is a blocker, critical, major, minor, or trivial. So again, you give a ton of bugs into the LLM and then let the LLM do its magic. Maybe you could also give some, some guidance on the, on the classification of previous bugs so that the LLM has an idea what should be clarified as a blocker critical and stuff like that. So you need to, 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 to talk a bit with the LLM with those prompts in order to achieve the results that you would like to get, right? So, and with that, we are all so always um, already coming to an end. So what is your power prompt? That's my question for the end of the video. I would really love to hear your prompts that you are using on a daily basis as a software tester, as a developer, or as a product manager or any other role that is involved in the software development lifecycle, what is your power prompt? I would love to read about that, share it with the community so we can learn from it. And with that, I'm going to say thank you. Thanks for coming by today and see you next time. Bye bye.